Hello everybody, welcome to the official cast of Breaky T versus Le Marcelet, round one of Group H. Breaky T with the Lizard Men, Le Marcelet with the Wood Elves. Obviously both blue, this is going to be, well it would be a nightmare to tell them apart, but we can uh, press red and blue button so you can easily see that Le Marcelet is the Wood Elves. It's a pretty standard Wood Elf team with two wrestle, two dodge linos, a strip baller, a tackler, and a leader thrower. So pretty standard, except he hasn't got a tree man. And uh, he hasn't got an apple. He's gone for a 12th player rather than an apple. Interesting. And yeah, he's definitely going to feel the thrower to get three rerolls. Oh. <sighs> And uh, <laughs> that's a pretty funny trick. <laughs> Whereas, spoilers, of course, Breaky T has gone for six block because it's the best build. Um, protecting his four skinks, protecting the crocs. I mean, he'll put it somewhere relevant, I guess. But three block guys on the LOS. He's got the chameleon skink as the 12th player, so only two rerolls and an apple. So the, the, probably the two reroll build is slightly weaker versus Wood Elves, right? Because you might have to do things and want a third reroll. But um, it's quite good in this format they can have over time. Like, love to see all the uh, customizations here. A bunch of customizations for Breaky T. <laughs> you sure did, Dimmy. Yeah, yeah. I also had a practice game versus Tree this morning. I, I got two of you to give me confidence. It was very kind of you both. But um, unfortunately, and I got so much confidence at the start of the game. Honestly, like, you know, the turn one. Turn one of that game. Boy, howdy. But anyway, let's not talk about the past. Got a job to do here, which is talk about the Marseillais versus. Break it. Well, he, he also goes by break it. I think that's how he wants it to be. Or oh, that's how he pronounces it himself. But he, he, he wasn't offended by breaky T, he said. But, you know. And he's got four catches here. So this is the uh, K-Fog build, right? The four catches. Except K-Fog... Uh, wait. K-Fog has nine dodge. K-Fog doesn't take the thrower. And takes the uh, apple and the third reroll. And then he also just gets another dodge. So, But there's still eight dodge on this team, which is quite a lot of dodge. Um, so yeah, very dodgy team for the Marcelo. He's got the ball on the thrower. He can pass the ball. I mean, probably would rather have it on a dancer, to be honest, but... Can always hand it off if he has to, can't he? Well, the thing is, true that practice isn't isn't wasted, is it? At the end of the day, you know, you've got that going for you in, uh, in other situations. That's all right. Break it thinking a lot. I mean, I imagine we're going to see a lot of contact because Lizard's a strength four, and he's got seven dudes who are strength four. Which is pretty strong. He's not. He's playing off. So, like, we saw Strider do this sometimes in the in the season finals. I really favour getting in with them, honestly. Like, your strength four. 
you've got a tail, prehensile tail on the uh, Croxigo. I like just jam everything in and hope for the best. Croc splits every turn, three dice with mighty blow, or two dice with block, you know, either one of those, and just get, just mass, you know, like, yes, they've all got dodge, but one in 36s do fail sometimes. So, uh, so yeah, I would definitely go heavy, heavy contact here. But Breaky T is playing a bit more conservatively. You know, losing a Saurus early would be disastrous, so... Well, any time it's disastrous, but particularly worse early, isn't it? But, um, like, if I'm Lamar's lay, I'm pretty happy about this, right? I'll just blitz a Saurus, maybe move somebody behind the lines, and I'm just quite happy. I'm quite happy just burning turns. Not a lot to say about this, is there? <laughs> this is a lot of time used to not really do anything. Also the Dancer Blitz. I might have gone for the Wrestle Blitz. Don't really want to get stuck in contact with the uh, Saurus there. Oh, he's got three rerolls. He could have eaten that block, and he does. I mean, he could he could have rerolled it. Sorry, I, I thought he was going to eat it, but I think he could have rerolled it. Now his dance is getting punched. Which isn't ideal, is it? Surely we'll see some. I mean, I, I don't know, maybe we won't. This is this is tricky to fill the dead air, isn't it? <laughs> can I have can I have fire and calcium to help me? <laughs> um. Misspelled Tree is, of course, playing her game right now on the uh, on her own channel, so can't join. Um, Devo is just playing some ladder, uh, so I guess he's not too fussed about doing the commentary. <laughs> so yep. Okay, didn't blitz, didn't croc blitz. I am disappointed. Okay, now we are seeing the contact. I think you have to. I think I think you have to see contact here as the uh, as the lizards. You have to ask questions of them and hope they can't answer. Now, the answer is usually roll some two pluses. <laughs> but they don't always find that, that two plus answer, do they? You know, sometimes they'll, uh, they'll roll a double one and you'll be very happy. No frenzy on these wood elves, so no surf danger for this Saurus. So he has got like a, a pin to the sideline danger, but 
three, four players on the Crocs is nice, isn't it? That is a nice Croc spot. Turning into a DACA that uh, starts with <laughs> 10 dodges, no, 9, 8, 8, no, 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 much less. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 dodges, okay. No, okay, we're not DACAing, we're going to fight. I'm going to 2D the Saurus, then 1D the uh, Crocs, or maybe 2D the Crocs as well. No. One, he's got dodge. Oh, succeeding a dodge must be nice. Gets the knockdown. Both of these, I guess. I can't see it. You know, if you're going to dodge the first one, you're surely going to dodge the second one. I can't see it being worthwhile to take this punch. Especially if it's a power, you can actually go through there if he wants to. So. Okay, so this is a basically a DACA with added punching, which is got to be good for the lizards, I think. They can just keep coming forward, keep blitzing and basing and hoping there's a 1 in 36 that gives them a chance. Yeah, well, they've, they've gone with this because it's like the tabletop standard, right? But tabletop is very limited by the logistics of playing in real life and, you know, tracking the skills and stuff and and all that sort of thing. Um, there's no reason that for online we couldn't have our own format that does allow, you know, still resurrection and still, like, X amount of gold and touch... Uh, gold and SPPs, but... Um, you know, it could be to a slightly higher total. Well, I want to try and avoid spoilers, DK Max. I want to try and avoid spoilers. But, um... It was a very good game. <laughs> Especially this is the official cast night, so I can... I'll do, um... I'll do a replay cast of it. And then, I mean, you can watch the VOD when you watch this VOD if you're interested, or whatever. But uh, it was all right. It was all right. I'm not. I'm not over the moon, and I'm not. Uh, I'm not crying. <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing, isn't it, Punter? That is the thing. It is that, like, journey of uh, of building a team, yeah, for sure. And the tension of getting it destroyed. Oh, there's the removal. Lovely. And with him not following, that means he can go in right in there, which is a lovely square. Doesn't go for it. I think he definitely million percent should have stood in the square. 
I think that was a really nice guy to stand in, but he's obviously got his own plans. Oh, <laughs> Major KFC. Diced. Yeah, it's it is it is funny blood ball with that that kind of thing, isn't it? It's it's a weird it's a, blood ball is just a weird game because a lot of the appeal is the kind of RPG element of building the team and stuff, and like not just having the not just having a bigger team, but yeah, the development and the growth. But then that's what stops it being competitive in any way. Because, you know, just it's just wild, isn't it? Like, you know, in chess, if imagine just randomly don't start with the queen one game and stuff. Like, it's crazy, right? So, like, and other people just get extra things. So, like, it's really hard to have anything like that and call it even vaguely competitive. So, it's a tough, it's a tough one. It is a tough one, Blood Bowl. What to do? Nope, getting a bit further forward. There's a one, but has dodge. In the moment, this, this throw is just instantly blitzable, so that was a pretty big dodge. If he just fails, he loses. Imagine doing a move like that, I would never. There's the one in nine away from the clocks. And does that, does the one in six before the one in nine? I guess he just wanted to keep the clocks occupied up there. Interestingly, if Breaky T had put his Saurus where I said, he could have blocked this guy and then moved in the Crocs onto the ball. Um, so there you go. Just just saying how brilliant I am. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, like he's he's got this free now, so he could he could use it to blitz this fellow with an assist if he wants three dice. And I guess that's why he pulled it back to, to cover that. I mean, <laughs> so the, you can say you can say it the other way, though, right, DK Max? Because like at the end of the day, if you were playing somebody who just refused to pick up the ball, they could never win, right? Or, or they would never, if they randomly got the ball from like touchbacks or scatter catches, if they never moved the ball in the end zone, they could never win, right? So ultimately, skill is the deciding aspect because you do have to put the guy with the ball in the in the end zone. You have to do that. So there's ultimately art always says luck decides it in the extreme, but it doesn't because it doesn't matter if you roll all sixes and your opponent rolls all like if you roll all ones and your opponent rolls all sixes, if they just don't put their man in the end zone, they don't win. So um No oh, oh wait, no, because then they could not field a player and then uh you could kill all of the players. But then they might not block you either. So if they don't block you and they don't score, they don't win. Can't win if they don't block you and don't score. So ultimately, the player choices are the most impactful thing. But yes, a lot of the time, if people are relatively close on skill, the dice are going... Like, the closer you are on all of the other things, the bigger an effect the other one has, right? So if you have even dice and you both play exactly the same, then it's probably the guy with a better team wins, right? Or if you've both got the same team and you've both got the same dice, the better player probably wins. If you're both about the same level and you've both got about the same team, then it's probably gonna be the one of the better dice wins. So, that's, that's about it. Uh, 
No, tuk tuk, because you draw six on things, things like picking up the ball, and then you draw armor when you knock somebody over, and then that means you'd kill them, you'd kill your opponents. So, yep, yeah, I like this pushing in. I'm not such a fan of um, allowing this catcher a two plus out, right? I would rather put one in front and one behind, or, yeah. Put one in front and one behind, or have this Saurus up here. Um, something other than just leaving the two plus away. But I like basing as much as you can. Didn't activate the uh, Crocs, did he? In case he went stupid. But on the other hand, you know, if you like going stupid is a disaster because now you've got a wide open space for these three to all run. But you know, if you power this guy, you could kill him, and then you've got tail on two players. So there was an argument for the, uh, uh, yeah, tuk tuk. So if you block something, you pick up the block dice, you roll the block dice, and then if you knock them down, you roll the armor and try to beat a nine plus, for example, and then you roll a double six and kill your opponent. Yeah, exactly, Denby. Yeah, I mean, that's basically it, right? It's the fun of doing it. And, like, you know, if you make a foul, you roll the dice and, and you know, try to break armor. You know, you're trying to hurt people. You trying to hurt your opponent is more fun than rolling to not have... rolling high numbers to not have your players hurt. Rolling high numbers to hurt your own players is just... Yeah, it's just not a feel-good thing, is it? So. Here we go, he's dodging without dodge. I mean, he does have three rerolls. It's turn five. This is fine. But he is going to have to dodge with the ball carrier. the hand off as well. Outrageous. This, this isn't looking very safe, is it? He does have dodges to make that can make it safer, but... Does he think he's handed it off to the... Oh, he hasn't activated yet. Oh, God. I couldn't tell that he hadn't activated because of these circles. Okay. So everything's fine. Yeah, exactly, Baron Bucky. Yeah, you know, pe pe people, local conventions are definitely a thing, aren't they? In, uh, in football. So a good recovery by Lamar's, wasn't it? He rolled a bunch of dice. He did solve all of these uh, questions by rolling some two pluses. <laughs> now, should should Breaky T have had these three players up, you know, stopping this, right? Maybe, rather than just putting two of them on this guy and keeping this guy beat. Who knows? Oh, make the dodges through. This is, the, this is the tough thing you've, you've got to do, really, isn't it? You have to put pressure on them, otherwise they'll just score, and you won't do anything. So you have to try and get into them, and you have to make them make some rolls, and you have to just hope they fail. Because if you don't do that, they'll just waste time, and they'll break through when they want and score. So. Illegal procedure is not a thing on tabletop either, no. Um, I loved it as a mechanic. Not because I did it to new players who didn't know any better, which is an insane thing that I don't know why. In, like, I can't believe people did that. But, you know, it's just great so that both of you have to track the state of the game. I, I kind of think it's crazy that people didn't like it. So yeah, this was the obvious blitz because it just opens up the way in and then basing a bunch of players as well. So like all of the sort will come in here 
base like these three spots are good spots, right? And you can also base these two from inside as well. You can base him from behind. But you'd rather be like level than behind, so might not even base this one plus it's got dodge, right? So better to like base the one that doesn't have dodge. This one can come from the front, and he does still have these two in front, so like it wasn't terrible having these two out. He's still got this one in front as well, so he's got some stuff in front to try and get in the way a little bit. It's quite good, isn't it? All the different, all the different streams of everybody uh, streaming everything. Very nice. Might as well go for the crocs block now. Like losing it doesn't really matter. Like boneheading doesn't really matter, so just try and try to power. That's not bad, is it? He's got he's got the big strength four in here, he's got some skinks behind. He has left the two plus out there for this catcher again. Again, this this skin could have been here, right? And then he wouldn't have had the two plus out. I really don't like just leaving the two plus out. This two plus is back. We've got two plus four there. He's got a two plus off there, or maybe he's a block. But all of this is, uh, you know, he's hemmed in by lizards. This is not too easy to break through. Be interesting to see how he solves it. Nice pal. Lovely. It is turn six. So I don't know where he's going with this. Is he gonna hand off to a catcher maybe? the power. This was the catcher I was thinking of. Because <laughs> he can uh, run up there. Can. Oh, rolled a one. He's got dodge. Doesn't want one in 36. Must be nice. <laughs> And the skinks can get him unless he makes these dodges from the two catches to screen. And they can still 1D him very easily. In fact, this guy could uh, do the assist, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then this one can stop can cancel either assist and then this guy can come in and blitz. So this is actually a very easy 2D on the ball here. So he has to he has to make other dice rolls. He has to make more dice rolls.
Rolls a one. Oh my god, puts in the re-roll. And that gets his tackle dancer through. To stick tackle on this guy. Doesn't do a whole lot, but it's better than nothing. <laughs> That might have been worth the reroll, honestly, because that had a, an extra dodge. Oh, he changed it. He moved this guy to there. I guess he saw the same thing as I did. Uh, try not to see it, but I mean, I'm sure he saw it right in the of the player. So now this one could. Oh my god, right. So he, he can. He can, <laughs> he can 1 or 2D the ball here, I'm sure. I'll say things like that. I'm sure he can hit the ball somehow. You know, making all the safe moves first. Very sensible. Oh my god. <laughs> he, uh... <laughs> he blocked the, uh, dancer instead of dodging away. And both downed into Dub Skull. 1 in 81 result. Very, very, very unlucky, and that basically guarantees the touchdown for the Wood Owls. Basically. I mean, how can I be a bit more exciting, Dimmy? How? What do you want from me? Do you want me to sing? Or dance? You can't see me dancing. Imagine I'm dancing. <laughs> right, I'm dancing now. You can't, I'm actually doing the same dance as the halfling. But you can't see me. But I am doing the halfling cheerleader dance. Which, to be fair, that's a great move by... Uh, by Breaky T. Much better from him, look. He's got these guys, they're in the France colours, incredible. Whereas Le Marzelier has the uh, Dryad cheerleaders. They fit the Wood Elves, but let's be honest, they're not as good as the Halflings, are they? <laughs> Where'd you put the pound notes? In the G string, of course. There's only one place to put them. Oh, he dodges away from the crocs as well. <laughs> the big streamers do stream Dance Revolution, don't they? But they are uh, they are a bit more female and prettier than I am, unfortunately. So yeah, no no real way to hit the ball. Ah, oh, I see that. He can more or less hit the ball if he wants. <laughs> he actually can 1D the ball here. And I guess, honestly, he kind of has to try, right? This really... Well, I mean, I like steps and uh, girls allowed. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> so, I mean, if you can't... I mean, 
breaky team must see this, so I'm, I'm definitely not giving advices here, right? One, two, three, four, five. GFI, GFI. Right, cancels both assists. In fact, you might not even need to do that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. GFI, GFI, and then one DM, yeah. Just straight through. Like two three plus dodges and two two plus GFIs. And if you power him, he goes there and the ball might go in the crowd. So this was very sloppy from uh, Le Marcelet just putting this guy here. He doesn't really do anything. Oh, well, he double wants. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Diced. Imagine rolling a double one on a dodge. It's a big mistake. Only pushes. He could re roll this. Only punished. One in uh, 216 times, but he doesn't. Four very exciting scores a touchdown. Is that good enough, Dimmy G? Woo! All right, one nil. Woo! So much better. I'll try. It's it's difficult for me. It's difficult for me. You know me, Dimmy. I'm not a hype man. I'm not VGP, but I can certainly try. I'll certainly try my best. That's all I can do. KO stays out, but it doesn't matter too much because he's got the communion skink. There is a one-turn chance here, right? A decent one-turn chance with uh, on the ball and a PA stat. PA 3 plus instead of 4. So, you know, there's there's a decent chance they've, they've got um, stunty to fill squares as well. So, you know, if, if breaky T, I don't know how good he is at one-turns, but... Um, if he's put in the work to be as good as Core, then he's got half a chance. Halloween Arian. I think France are going to win this. Yeah, they're both French. Uh, Breaky T and Lamars. I can tell you how they qualified. Thanks to Breaky T, funny enough. He's the guy with the. He is the man with the spreadsheets, is Breaky T. Uh, Blood Bowl Clash is how he qualified. And Lamar's qualified through the Champions Cup Season 5 playoffs. So it needs three pushes forward here. It's very doable. Halloween Iron. Yeah, Pages build is not madness actually. <coughs> it's genius, I think. It's also the build that... Uh, like got most Kaz at Euro Bowl and European. <laughs> the same exact build got most Kaz in both formats. Pretty hilarious. I think it's perfect for Mr. Page, isn't it? It's entertaining and it, it can high roll. I mean it seems it seems pretty perfect. If you ask me. I mean, the, the Blackhawks did all right at Euro Bowl because if you make loads of cars, you can win. I feel like you've got more chance of winning with Blackhawks by making a million cars than you do by like playing properly. Now I know Inarian got like fourth in the World Cup by playing properly. But still, there was a lot of luck involved in that run as well. And Mighty Blow at least leans into the luck aspect, right? I 
I really don't know how he's doing this, by the way. I assume we're going to see like a stunty dodge somewhere, or double stunty dodge. Maybe this guy squeezes two in, but then he blitzes, but then that's the wrong player there, so I, I just don't know. I really don't know how he's doing that. We'll see. On the ball, gets the free catch attempt. Very exciting. And then gets high kick, so he could have done that anyway. Well, hey. Okay, so he's going to blitz using the whole method. And then block this one forward. One then blocking forward two, then blocking forward three, and then he'll be out there only two dodges to score. So in that case, he probably wants to give him the ball now, right? I guess he doesn't doesn't have to, because he can get Gets the push. Out of re-rolls, however. There's going to be a lot of pushes now required. Gets the first one. This is looking like he didn't really think about getting the ball to the skink and stuff. You can go in here and pass it to him and try and catch it in a fall. That's probably looking at like what he has to do now, right? Thing is, what he could have done is, if he'd power, he could have done the block. If he like, if he'd had more players or had the player there, he could have done the block, and then he could have even powered um, if he'd had the communion skin further up. So there was things he could have done differently there, but uh, really tough with one reroll. Right? Really tough with one reroll to get all those pushes. And the Woodies are on 10 players. We've got half a chance of a draw here as Breaky T. But it's very scary facing the war dancers with skinks. try and do like a normal, a completely normal offence, right? Just try and get a 1-1 one -one draw. Bang as much as possible. Protect the ball as much as possible. And, uh, yep. Hope for the best. <laughs> That's about as complicated as it gets. <laughs> to blitz somebody got a reroll oh the lizards that's actually really nice isn't it going to three rerolls from two this isn't quite the perfect anti-blitz setup that I would have chosen 
but it's all right. But like, it could have just been better, right? Like, it, he hasn't got a, hasn't got frenzy, so these could have just been forward with a skink behind them. I could have had a skink behind here as well. In fact, I could have had the source of the source behind there, and the skinks could have gone. All three skinks could have gone here. Would have been the best. Not making it 3D. Only gets pushes. I don't hate having all of the skinks around the same place because at least like um, you know you don't want them blitzable by woodies anyway, right? So it's not it's not so normally I don't really like the uh, I like holding like a high and wide line to stop the guys getting into your backfield. But if that's skinks you don't really want the skink getting blitzed and and you know going through the skinks so it's not so bad to have the skinks in the long little place like this. I think we'll go for the pickup now rather rather than activate the crocs. Like still go for the crocs block at the end but yeah, I think, yeah, here we go, go for the pickup. Might reuse the reroll now, seeing as he's got three. It does not reroll it, it's on the floor. Um, this one, <laughs> Breaky T versus the Marcelin, is on now. Um, then after this, at half nine, there is Strider versus Jay Leave. I'd like to do that one live as well. And then might fit in one or two replays as well. We'll see how it goes. I think I'd have used rear on the ball there, right? Because you don't want to fail next turn, right? Like, yes, you want to conserve your reroll, but the problem is now you're a one in nine from losing, right? Whereas, if you uh, if you'd rerolled it last turn, then you'd be a one in twenty seven from losing, basically. <laughs> Not going to stay up late. I mean, I might stay up late. I mean, at half nine, we'll probably end at eleven, and then um, there might be, you know, there might be time for a game in between this one and the Strider game, and then there might be replays and stuff. Oh yeah, your game starts at 10, right? So I can only do Striders or yours. And it is Strider versus Jay Leave. So uh, I think that'll be a very interesting game. So yeah, sorry. Sorry, Rattamo. It's not, it's not personal. But, um... You know, we'll see. It's not the time. It's just the clash, right? It's the clash, not the time. Yeah, I really like rerolling the pickup, especially with three, right? Yes, you might end up using a reroll that you could have saved, but now you are a one in nine from losing the game right now. 11% of the time, you just straight up lose. Like, almost certainly. You could get a lot of crazy dice. And, you know, he could make all the safe moves first here and, like, maybe, maybe rescue it if he doesn't make the pick-up. But realistically, the best play is to just pick it up instantly and then move into the cage here, right? But, yeah, he's going to move everyone back and cover it. Uh, honestly, this is just, like, it makes sense because you don't want to lose 11% of the time. But the problem is, is how much, like, win chances are you losing by defaulting or, you know, by devote all these players to bring them back and stuff and covering against a fail that almost cost you the game anyway.
Okay, well, he's not putting too much back. The tight cage here is a bad idea, I think, because... I guess maybe he makes it a H cage. Well, it doesn't look like he is. There we go, it's a one on the pickup. And it's a two on the pickup. And now, it's not over. It's really not over. But this is very, 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 very likely absolute disaster for the lizards. Yeah, I feel bad now after after calling it, but uh, yeah. And this is a pretty easy clear or scatter. Probably better to just clear it right and then. Uh, And then pick it up on a three plus and uh, score basically three two to three two to go two nil up. Yeah, I mean it's it's why I didn't take uh, humans for the World Cup on Blood Bowl two. Uh, it just seems so crazy like that. It's so easy, like, you know what I mean? I mean, <laughs> no spoilers, but with elves, it's quite easy to roll a 1 in 36. And uh, it's obviously so much easier to roll a 1 in 9 as, uh, as humans. Oh, so, yeah, obviously, you tip and pull down here. And. Uh, Probably should have moved this guy first, right? Safe move. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One of those things, you know, there's no dice rolls required. He could have moved him there. Just moved him there first. Here's somewhere. Three, four, five, six, seven. It's like there, so you're not blocking him. So he, he dodged. I don't like the dodge there because it's just not doing that much for you. Adding a 1 in 36 chance of failing is not something you should be doing. But there you go. He rolls the 2-3-2, two, two, gets the ball, scores 2-0 up. And it's basically over, right? It's <laughs> Sorry, with six turns left, it's just a reality of blood ball. This is very, very difficult for the Lizards now. Very, very difficult. Incredibly difficult. I mean, it was pretty unlucky, right? He did fail all three pickups, so like there was a one in twenty seven to fail all three of them, so like he was definitely very unlucky. But, um, yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. It was like so lethal. Like that's why I'd have rerolled the first one because it's just like you've already failed the first one. So like, yes, the chance of the whole sequence is one in twenty-seven, but once you've failed the one, the first pickup, now you're a one in nine away from disaster. And he could have at least made himself a one in twenty-seven away from disaster, and he'd got the extra reroll from the kickoff. So I feel like he just had to reroll that initial pickup. Now he's left himself a bit more open to a uh, blitz. There isn't a blitz. There is a touchback though. So you can give that to the golden gloved one. Lovely. And he can try and push down the sideline here and maybe make a sideline cage or something and uh, try to bang this in in two and then, you know, maybe he's got a chance. Honestly, you should probably Croxigo Blitz. He's just got to get lucky now, right? Like, this is the thing. This is the... 
this is the thing you've got to realize how far behind you are and how lucky you need to get so i feel he should definitely be blitzing with a crocs score now getting a mighty blow in on that catcher getting a crocs score on the dancer and the dodge guy and like the tail and just uh really be pushing ridiculously hard right now down the side He's dub scold. Oh god. <laughs> he could eat this, honestly, because he's the ball's pretty safe. So he could eat this and then try and score on turn thirteen. He could have. Cause the ball was pretty safe. Crocs in. I think he is going for it, isn't he? Even though it's not really a very good time to go for it. In fact, he's used the rerolls, kind of committed him down this line. He only has to be in three squares to be a scoring threat. So he might just go in three squares and might make some kind of weird misshapen cage here. <laughs> Pretty diced. Pretty diced old breaky tea. That's pretty brutal. Flip me. Flip me. One in 27 to not pick up the ball from three attempts, and then two one in 36 blocks on the same turn. Down to one reroll. But he has got a chance to score next turn. He can hand off to that skink that's in scoring range. Unless the Marcelez deals with that skink. You know, which is just a straight 1 9 from the tackle dancer. He can dodge away and uh, hit it straight away. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Right? Quite easy to hit him with a tackle. If he wants to, but you know, there's, all, there's also more than one way to skin a cat, so he might, he might try something else. It is top two qualifying indeed, Steve. Yeah. Yeah, so people losing in the first round aren't even out, right? Um, obviously, it's a lot harder for them than the ones who've won. <laughs> Captain Obvious. Like, drawing isn't, like, drawing isn't even that much better than losing, right? Because... It's basically two wins and you qualify. So he's knocked down everybody except the skink. And <laughs> knocks down the Saurus and the Crocs. He 
could uh, he could do something here. I think there's quite a good play that uh, quite a good play that Breaky T can do here. Let's see if he does it. Wow, the Marseillaise used uh, six and a half minutes of over six and a half minutes of time bank, but he is two and up, so I guess it doesn't matter too much. Yeah, I see a very nice play here. We'll see if uh, we'll shall see if Bricky T sees it and goes for it. I mean, he might see it and not go for it, but I think I think it's the play to do. Can you shoot a play, guys? Yes. Wow, this uh, this timer bug can go pretty annoying. Okay, so he, the, what he could have done to score this turn was that skink could have dodged in here, then this Saurus could have blitzed him and then chained him out. So then he could have just handed it off and he could have scored. But I do think this is better to uh, to go up this side with your free Saurus and your couple of skinks. He's still got four turns to turn over the, uh, well, sorry, three turns to turn over the uh, Wood Elves and beat them. Don't like that base on the uh, Dancer, though. You literally don't have a cage now. Gonna dodge away from tackle to uh, even try to get it. This looks uh, pretty terrible. Yeah, this 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 base was real bad. He's probably kicking himself right now, isn't he? Like if this guy was here and this guy goes there and he's got a full cage. So now he just needs crazy dice from this skink. Oh my goodness. He's got dodge. <laughs> he does both GFS. <laughs> I hate putting him out here though, right? He should be here. Because that, I mean, unless this is on purpose to tempt to tempt Le Marcellet in, this is a 4 plus to 2 dice the ball with dodge. So very likely. He might not go for the ball sack though, right? He might just blitz in front and screen. It's not necessarily correct to go for the ball sack, no matter how tempting that ball sack may look to you. <laughs> you might need to refrain. But 75% to get in and then followed by another 75% is pretty tempting when you're already tuning up. See though, maybe not. Mm. Well, that looks like he's not going for the ball sack. I'm a little bit surprised. Yeah, I don't think this was like a huge thinking turn, right? Like, I would have kept the time bank for my drive if I'm, uh... 
if I end up, you know, if the Skaven, if the Skaven, if the Skinks end up scoring, you know, then I want the, uh, I want the time bank for my drive. Not this turn. That, you know, in the grand scheme of things, isn't too critical. Like, you could play this turn perfectly and still concede. Whatever that perfect is. But instead, he's eating heavily into his time bank here. He might even run out this turn, yeah. Wow. These elves never rolling a 1 in 36 is pretty good. Don't recall them failing any dodge at all. Yeah. Eight seconds left. Will he run out before he dodges this lineman? No, he ended the turn. I guess yeah, dodging this guy isn't too bad, isn't too good because he could just blitz with his Saurus anyway, right? So Saurus are all tagged, ish. There's one that can free the Crocs, so the Crocs can free him. So yeah, dodging would have made it better, but then also worse because it just frees the guy to do the blitz. This looks a pretty simple, uh, simple way to score touchdown. We shall see. And you have three turns to turn over the Wood Elves and make it a 2 2 draw. It will be hard, but you know, you never know. Like, you know, elves do roll one in 36s sometimes. I would hate that he stood this guy. My play would have been blocking this fella and then blitzing this guy and then just scoring. Breaky T going into his time bank. Less than three minutes. Like, he really has to score this turn. He's blitzing the dancer for a pow? Is that his plan? Or is that the cover against failure? Like, he could have done this block, right? Could have moved this Crocs in, done this block, and then the Blitz could have been with this block guy, right? Still two dice because he's a catcher. So this was the play. But now I don't know what he's doing. Maybe he's one dice blitzing that catcher.
makes the dodge and he's got three turns and one re-roll to try and make it 2-2 two -two. woo touchdown woo there you go Dimmy a bit of excitement for you touchdown excitement woo woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. touchdown excitement it's not over Elliot was right you know there are dice to be rolled Marcelet only has five seconds in his time bank so you know if uh, if if Breaky T can ask him some complicated questions maybe he won't come up with the answers in time and up you know end the turn ball completely exposed because he uh, ran out of time unexpectedly so there's definitely is definitely a chance for Breaky T here to get the draw not to win obviously he can't he, winning is completely beyond him at this point but he can get the draw <laughs> Jesus <laughs> what a terrifying thought evil news wow. This is looking like a dacker or just a turtle, right? Brilliant coaching gets another reroll for Breaky T, puts him to the second reroll again. It's a great kick though for Lamar's. It just, you know, definitely means he's not going to try and punch anything. He's just going to run everything back. You'd think. <laughs> you would think, but maybe not. Oh my god, he starts off with a dice roll, and it's a 1 in 36. That is outrageous. Outrageous. Outrageous! I'd have definitely just moved my whole team back around the ball and dacked. If that's not your plan, then surely it's better to just go for the pickup. Uh, maybe not. Maybe you do do that dodge and then go for the pickup. Unfortunately for Breaky T, there was no way to uh, break through here, was there? So the skinks are going to have to dodge through. But, I mean, they can. They certainly can succeed these dodges. Might even try for a Saurus dodge at the end, honestly. I honestly don't hate this Saurus dodge. Three, four, five, six. I didn't have Saurus through as well. It's not even that, that unlikely, and it's not that bad. Failing in here, it's still like he's still taking square up. So, like, after you've dodged the Skinks through. I really wouldn't hate the uh, 5 plus get souls through as well.
I mean, maybe just standing here is the best. Here or here. Or tackle. Oh. Well, what he probably shouldn't have done <laughs> was uh, was go through the tackle when he could have just, you know. I oh, know he probably had to do that, didn't he? Oh, well, well he gets the second one. Double GFI? And there's no real point, right? You just make him do one in 36. I'm sure he could have done a different blitz direction to be dodging through not tackle. This feels like pretty bad to have used a reroll on this and go be going through three plus instead of one in nines. You could have just you could have just blitzed like a different way and had um, and gone through there. Like this guy could be in a different square. He could be making one in nine zero one three. So yeah, bit of a mistake. Bit of a mistake from Breaky T there. Game on. It is game on. Oh, is it both down, was it? Um, well, in that case, yeah, it's just six bit, doesn't it? Ah, the eye cage. Very nice versus lizards. These Wood Elves never failing one in 36 is very strong, isn't it? He did not support the crocs at all, so it gets 2 deed away. Strong having so many dodge players, isn't he? Wow, he's not even doesn't even care. Oh my god, he's doing GFI's rushes. Runs out of time before this wrestler. I guess his plan was to bring the wrestler down here. Just too far away, I guess, for the Saurus. Yeah, I'll just still put the Saurus here. By the way. Oh, dude, I don't think you can afford to take a Saurus weight. Like, you're already losing 2 1, right? You're already losing 2 1. Just forget him and hope things work, I think. Is what you have to do. Just over a minute for breaky T. And there's a time bank. Well, not just over a minute, is it? A minute and a half. But nothing for Lamar's. But he's got the ball on it and blotches, so it's really, really difficult for Breaky T to get anything on him. We're gonna need like a Saurus to be in range and make a dodge to hit him probably. Very exciting though, isn't it? I mean, it's better to just do the Saurus dodge right here, but if I... Saurus dodge is better than trying double red dice. If he can get a Saurus dodge. To try. He needs to do something soon though.
Needs to press some buttons. <laughs> well, now we now we've got a minute less than a minute in the time bank. He's got a skink here who can come around. A skink here. Who can, I mean, I really like this guy, Double G, if I'm to go here. I really like that play. Oh, now we're down to 30 seconds. Flip me. Is he... Are they, are they on a pause or something? Nope, he's alive. He might run out of time this turn. Oh my goodness. I thought it was going to be... I thought it was going to be Lamar's that ran out of time, but it's Breaky T that's going to run out of time for a minute and a half. From a minute and a half, okay, he gets this move in just, but he doesn't move this skink. He runs out of time before the skink can do anything. That is, quite frankly, unacceptable to use a minute and a half of your time bank and not have this guy move. He could have been in here, he could have been here, stopping this dodge out, he could have been here, stopping that. He could have just been here to be like somewhere relevant. He could have been here to stop this catcher. Having an easy dodge out. He could have been anywhere except nowhere. That was uh, a little bit poor. Oh, the, the, the miles ran out last turn. I thought he ended the turn. I guess the, the time was, wasn't was right on the tur turn, but it is now. This is why Tabletop needs chess clocks, yeah. It, it's part of the game. It, I think it should be, you know, making your decisions. You know, today. <laughs> like, if you've got infinite time, you'll make better decisions, won't you? Oh, got a reroll. Full pal. Yeah, I just thought he ended the turn, though. I, I did say that, but then I thought he just ended the turn. But maybe that was the turn before, and I'm just confusing myself. Definite Soros dodge, right? Soros dodge, two dice, and then hope for the best. This guy will come in the back, and then this guy will dodge and blitz. Fails. It was the only. It was the only play, though. You know, had to, had to do it. Saurus Bliss was way better than a skink trying to double up her power. And he gets the handoff and he gets the 3 1 win. There you go. Wood Elves demolishing lizards as. The NAS stats say they should. I don't think it's as one-sided as, as the NAS stats say it is. I really don't think it's that one-sided a matchup. Like, I would rather be the Wood Elves in the matchup, don't get me wrong. I would rather be the Wood Elves in this match. But I don't think it's as lopsided as the NAF stats would suggest it is. But, having said that, the Woody's Zala favorite is tough for the Lizards. Congratulations to Lamar Zalea's gets the victory over breaky T. Commiserations to him and thanks for watching everybody. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and stay fantastic.